Good day everybody. Today I'm going to be reviewing a game called Contigo. This game came out in 1974 from the 3M Bookshelf series and it is for two to four players. Now Contigo actually has two different games in it. There's the alignment version and then there's the capture version. Of the alignment version what you're going to be trying to do is you're going to be trying to get four pawns in a row on the board uninterrupted and uh, there's going to be pits and pebbles that you're going to be moving around on the board in order to determine how far your pawns can move. In the capture version of the game, what you're going to be trying to do is you're going to be trying to capture uh, one of your opponent's king pawns, and each one has one king pawn. Um, this game is rather unique as far as a strategy game goes. It kind of mixes Mancala, Tic-Tac-Toe, and Checkers all in one. It's pretty unique. Let me go ahead and show you how this game works. Okay, everybody, I have uh, one of the versions of the game set up here, and I'm going to go ahead and show you the components really quick. Uh, of course, you have your Contigo board, and this is split up into two different halves, and uh, each half has a, a box that you place underneath it. And what you're going to do is you're going to clip both the boxes together to make the board like so. You have um, your pawns over here, and there's four different colors. In the two-player game, you're going to be using the red and the blue pawns, and in the four-player version, you're going to be using these pawns along with the blue and the red pawns. Then you have your pebbles over here and there's bunches of these and uh, determining on which game you're going to play you're going to put different amounts of pebbles in the pits to start with and throughout the game you're going to be moving these pebbles into different pits to try to change up the movement rules of the pawns. So how does this game work? Well in the alignment version of the game you're going to be trying to get four of your pawns in a row without any of your opponent's pawns in the way, either horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. And uh, here's an example. You could have a pawn here, a pawn here, and a pawn here, and a pawn here, and that will help you to win the game, but there can't be a red pawn in between like that. So how do you move the pawns? Well, this is where the pits and the pebbles come into play. If you want, you're going to look at whatever direction you want to move one of your pawns, and then you are going to look at the pit that is directly in front of the direction you want to go and see how many of these pebbles are in there. This is going to determine how many spaces you are going to move. So for example, if I wanted to move this pawn this way, I would look at this pit with these two pebbles and this will tell me that I could have to move two spaces. So I will go one and two. If I wanted to do, um, say, I wanted to move this pawn this way, Again, I would look, and there's two pebbles here, so I would go one, two, and that would determine my move. Now, if there's an opponent's pawn or my pawn that is in that space, I'm not going to be able to land there. I'm going to have to figure out another uh, direction to go. And that's part of where the strategy comes in. So then I'll get to the second half of my turn, which will be moving the pebbles into a different pit. So let's say I went ahead and did the first half of my turn. I went ahead and moved this guy one. And now I'm going to go ahead and determine and decide which pebbles I want to move and where I want to place them. Now the way it works is let's say I want to move these pebbles. Um, there's two pebbles in here and this also determines the range as to how far I can go from the original position. So for example there are two pebbles in my hand that were in this pit so I can place a pebble here here and that's as far as I can go since there's two pebbles or here and here again because there, I have two pebbles in my hand, that means two spaces over. Now, I have to use both the pebbles. I can't just pick one up and leave one in there. I have to use both. So let's say I decide I'm going to go ahead and place both of the pebbles in here, like so. Now, you can put one here, one here, two here. You can do it however you want to do it, so long as it uh, falls within the range. So now let's say red goes ahead and go. Now, red, now red if he had a, a pawn here, he would be able to move four because he would have to move four because there are four uh, pebbles in this pit. So let's say red decides to go. Uh, red decides he's going to go ahead and move this guy two. So now he's got two in a row over here, and he's hoping that's going to help him. So now red decides to look, and he's trying to figure out what can he do. So red has a pawn over here, and let's say he wants to try to get him over here on the next turn. So what Red will do is he's going to take two of these. This is the end of the range where he can put them, so he's going to go ahead and put the two pebbles there. So on his next turn, he will be able to move four, and this will allow him to get three in a row. Now, Blue kind of sees that Red is trying to uh, uh, get a three in a row over here, so Blue is going to try to see if he can go ahead and counter that. Now, so what he decides to do is he decides he is going to move this guy up two, so he'll go one, two, because of these two pebbles, 
And so now he's set up to where he can go across or diagonally. So now again, he's going to go ahead and move some pebbles around. And he, since he sees what uh, Red is trying to do, he's going to go ahead and take all four of these pebbles out. Now he has a range of four on either side that he can place these pebbles. So he can put four, one, two, three. He can go all the way to here or he can go all the way to here. And again, he can disperse these pebbles however he wants to do it. So let's just say he decides he's going to put a pebble there or a pebbles there and one there. And so that's kind of how this version of the game works. It's just going to go back and forth like this until somebody ends up getting four in a row. And okay, everybody, here is the capture version of the game. Um, now, the setup with the pits and the pebbles are different. As you can see, there's four uh, pebbles here, one here, two here, etc. And, of course, all four of the pawns were in use this time. Um, you will notice that these corner pawns right here have two pawns stacked on top of each other. These are called your key pawns. If uh, you lose your key pawn from a capture, then you're going to be out of the game. And then whoever captures you is going to be able to use your pawns to uh, help him win the game. Uh, so the way this game works is that uh, you're going to be trying to capture your opponent's pawns and you're going to be moving the same way you would in uh, the alignment version. So for example, let's say Red were to go first and he decided he was going to move four with his key pawn, I'm just saying. So he goes one, two, three, four. And then he goes ahead and he moves these four. Let's just split it up like this, like that. All right, now let's say it's uh, Green's turn. Um, so Green decides he's gonna go ahead and try to move uh, up. So Green goes ahead and moves up. And then he moves his uh, two uh, tokens. Uh, let's see a good place to put them. See, he puts one here and one there. Um, now, let's say that there were three uh, pebbles here and it was Orange's turn. Orange would be able to go one, two, three and capture the green pawn. And he put it aside and then that would constitute capture. And that, again, if a key pawn gets captured in this game, that player is going to be out of the game. Say it was Blue's turn and uh, there were three pebbles here and he decided to go one, two, three. This guy, Orange, would be out of the game. And then blue would be able to use orange's pawns, the remaining pawns, to help him win the game. In this particular game, the person who has the remaining uh, key pawn on the board is going to win. Now, a pawn can actually capture more than one piece. If he captures a piece, let's say red here captures green and takes him out of the game, he will be able to capture another piece so long as the pebbles will allow him to do so. And it would have to be with the same pawn. And so basically the game is going to keep going until there is only one key pawn left and whoever has the key pawn left in the game is going to win. And that's how you play the capture version of this game. So my thoughts on Contigo. Well, I got to tell you, this is another one of those strategy games that 3M made and I think it's a solid one. Um, I like the fact that there's two different versions of the game. Uh, that you can play and actually even though this is the four player version you can actually play with two players you would just have to pick two different colored pawns um, but it's really unique in the fact that it mixes um, three different games kind of together with checkers and tic-tac-toe and mancala and um, I like the way you have to pre-program your moves by moving these pebbles around because you're technically having to keep an eye out on two different things you're having to watch your opponent to see what he's doing, what he's trying to set up, and then you also have to keep an eye on the pebbles because, you know, the pebbles is what's going to determine where the pawns are going to move. But overall, it's a solid game, and this is one of the last 3M bookshelf games that 3M made. Um, the quality, as far as the components, is not as good as in previous games. The plastic on here is a little bit cheap, and the box is a little bit thinner and not necessarily as sturdy as previous 3M games. But overall, the game is still a good game. I really like it. That is my review. I hope you all have a great day.